Oracle, a name that is so famous in the tech world. From 1977 to the present, it's been one of the most successful names in the tech world. Oracle provides a lot of services, but if you ask me to tell you about one of the best services provided by Oracle, then I must have to say about the database. Oracle database is one of the most widely used relational databases in the world. But many of us don't know about Oracle or how Oracle was made. And today, we are going to know about that. Oracle versus IBM The story began with a war between Oracle and IBM, a war about relational databases. The war began in 1970. Larry Ellison, founder of Oracle, dropped out of college as soon as he learned the skill he needed to pursue his dreams. In the mid-1970s, Ellison left school so he could start a company that developed relational databases. But why it is like a war with IBM? Oracle and IBM are both major players in the relational database market, offering a range of database management system or DBMS for enterprise use. Oracle Database is one of the most widely used relational databases in the world and is known for its scalability, performance and security. It offers a variety of features such as advanced data compression, real application testing, and support for both structured and unstructured data. Oracle's database also offers several advanced features for data warehousing, business intelligence, and big data analytics. IBM's relational database offering is IBM DB2. It is known for its ability to handle large amount of data and is often used for large enterprises and government organizations. IBM DB2 is also known for its highly availability and disaster recovery capabilities, as well as its ability to integrate with other IBM products such as IBM WebSphere and IBM Cognos. Both Oracle and IBM relational databases offer similar features, but Oracle is more widely used and has a larger market share. Oracle is also considered a more mature technology. The choice between the two often comes down to the organization's specific needs and existing technology stack. So, let's get back to the past. Relational databases were a relatively new concept when Ellison formed Oracle in 1977. E.F. Todd, a computer programmer for IBM, wrote about relational models in 1970. The database stored information in a chart with rows and columns. A simple query could browse the chart to locate the desired content. When Ellison read about it, he believed that relational databases would offer tremendous benefits to enterprises. Even at its most basic application, companies could use relational databases to quickly add and retrieve data about everything from product prices to customer histories. Ellison offered IBM to work with them but IBM rejected Oracle software. That's why Ellison decided to develop it with other founders of Oracle themselves. They started their mission in 1978 and after they complete the first version, it just blows the database world. The version only included 128 kilobyte of RAM on a PDP-11 under RSX-11. Well, it doesn't sound so impressive in today's standard, but it was a tremendous step forward, especially considering that most of the work came from three programmers working on a shoestring budget. And after that, the rest of the story is just a history. But the most important concept for a startup or a company is funding. In this concept, Oracle faced a lot of problems from the beginning. So, let's deep dive into this concept. The Story of Funding Oracle Corporation was founded in 1977 by Larry Ellison, Bob Miner, and Ed Oates. The company initially founded itself through a combination of personal savings and venture capital. The company went public in 1986, and since then, it has been primarily financed through the sale of its common stock and debt issuance. Oracle has not raised any external funding rounds through venture capital firms or private equity investors. Oracle has been profitable since its inception and has consistently generated positive cash flow, which has allowed the company to fund its growth through internal cash flow. Oracle has also made several strategic acquisitions over the years using a combination of cash and stock to fund these deals. In recent years, Oracle has been focused on increasing its cash reserves and in 2019, the company announced a new 10 billion share buyback program, which was completed in 2020. The company also announced a new 15 billion share buyback program in 2020 and it has been consistently buying back shares from the market. In summary, Oracle's funding history is primarily through its initial public offering and debt insurance, with a focus on increasing cash reserves through share buybacks. 
Tech Power of Oracle Oracle is one of the most well-known names in the tech industry. They provide a lot of tech services, but I think most of you don't know about them. Oracle, a name that sounds like that, will take care of many of your problems, like database management, middleware, cloud service, hardware systems, etc. In the beginning, Oracle didn't provide that much of service, but now it's different. Let's see some of their services. Database Management System Oracle offers a variety of databases, including the Oracle Database, which is a relational database management system, and the MySQL Database, which is an open-source relational database management system. Middleware Oracle provides a variety of middleware products, including the Oracle WebLogic Server, which is a Java EE application server, and the Oracle Fusion Middleware which is a collection of middleware products that includes the Oracle WebLogic Server, the Oracle SOS Suite, and the Oracle Business Intelligence Suite. Applications Oracle offers a wide range of applications including Enterprise Resource Planning or ERP, Customer Relationship Management or CRM, and Human Capital Management or HCM applications. Cloud Services Oracle provides a variety of cloud services including Infrastructure as a Service or IaaS, Platform as a Service or PaaS, and Software as a Service or SaaS offerings. Hardware System Oracle designs, manufactures, and sells a variety of hardware systems including servers, storage systems, and networking equipment. Services Oracle offers a wide range of professional and managed services, including consulting, implementation, and support services. Analytics and AI Oracle provides a variety of analytics and AI solutions, including data warehousing, data integration, and business intelligence tools, as well as cloud-based machine learning platform. Oracle Now on December 12, 2022, Oracle Corporation announced fiscal 2023 Q2 results. It's like the past revenue results of Oracle. Total quarterly revenues were up 18% year-over-year in USD and up 25% in constant currency to $12.3 billion. Cloud services and license support revenues were up 14% in USD and 20% in constant currency to $8.6 billion. Cloud license and on-premise license revenues were up 16% in USD and 23% in constant currency to $1.4 billion. For the second quarter of fiscal 2023, Cerner contributed $1.5 billion to total revenues. The revenue looks like a math calculation. So let me clear it out for you. The present Oracle market value is $42.4 billion. And at this moment, Oracle's stock price is $86 as of 19 January. There are 2.7 billion shares of oracles, so you can buy some if you want. Although, this is the history of one of the great empires of tech world, the history of Oracle.